and welcome back. In a time when we are more aware than ever of our hygiene rituals, I thought, isn't it about time we deep cleaned our makeup brushes? I know it's time for me, that's for sure. Here are the makeup brushes I most commonly use. I've got some other ones here. And I'm going to look at different ways, the quickest and simplest ways to deep clean your makeup brushes. Now we should all be cleaning our makeup brushes regularly. If you've ever had to, your makeup done um, professionally, you'll know that between every single person, they sanitize their makeup brushes normally in an alcohol solution um, that basically kills all the bacteria straight away. They sort of soak them in them and at the, the bottom of the day, at the end of the day, you can sort of see this sort of brownie, foundation-y kind of shade gunk that everything's sort of sitting in and all the times I've ever done television and things like that anyway. Uh, the rest of us, however, are lackadaisical to say the least. Now, what um, I saw recently on Instagram though was Jamie Genevieve trying the sieve technique. So I thought I'd test it for you. That's the idea that a sieve can help you. Whoops, that's the idea that a sieve can help you deep clean your makeup brushes. And I'm gonna show you different ways and different things to use to make sure that you're not transferring bacteria and viruses and microbes onto your skin that can live on your makeup brushes. And actually one of the most common questions I get is people with perioral dermatitis or with dermatitis around their eyes saying to me what's causing it what's suddenly making it flare up and the most common thing i reply is by saying when was the last time you cleansed your makeup brushes or when was the last time you cleansed the sponge on the end of your inbuilt sponge applicator concealer and more often than not that's the cause so basically they've probably just gone in under their nose picked up a bit of bacteria and then basically spread it around up onto the rest of their face it's a really really easy thing to do even if you don't share your makeup brushes so let's get back to why and how we should be clearing our makeup brushes and cleaning our makeup brushes i've got a few things to hand here if you want to clean along with me you can press pause I, um, I've got all anti-back stuff, however, let's be honest here, I've got the Complete Care-X anti-back hand gel and then I've got a Sainsbury's anti-back washing up liquid here. These things only really work, I happen to have them around the house, I've got cats so I'm very careful about washing my hands and washing up their, their areas and stuff like that. These things don't really work unless you leave them in contact with the thing you're cleaning for a, a fair amount of time. Now that doesn't, you're never gonna leave them on your hands for five minutes at a time or two or three minutes at a time, probably, well, not outside of today's regulations about cleaning your hands for two minutes, um, but they're really great for brushes and I'm gonna show you how. So let's start off by saying, traditionally, the way you, you clean your makeup brushes and the easiest way to clean your makeup brushes is, is with a traditional bar of white soap. And I say a bar of white soap simply because and you'll need a running tap water here, which I obviously can't show you, is the white soap will show you how clean your brush is as you keep cleaning it. So perfect case in point, let's have a look at something. Let's, let's grab something that's pretty muzzy here. And actually I'm gonna start with <laughs> the most common makeup brush I use, which is the It Cosmetics Double Ending one. And it's probably filthy. So I use my that to apply my founda foundation and that to blend my concealer. And if you just dip it in the water, right, I'll show you how dirty it is because if you do that, then what will start to happen is your soap will turn that color. Look, isn't that disgusting? That's all the old foundation. Now that bar of soap there, you can tell how often I actually get in the bath. That's the one I normally have by the side of my bath i.e. not very often. That is a L'Occitane, um, uh, I think it's the goat milk one. Anyway, look at that, it's disgusting. And what you have to do is you have to keep doing that and rinsing it under the tap, keep doing that and rinsing it under the tap until that is just the colour of soap. And that's when you know your brush is clean. So that's my normal everyday tip for washing brushes. You just need a bar of Dove, simple, goat's milk soap, something that's pretty gentle and unfragranced. And then that happens to be stuck to that because I very rarely use it because I don't really take baths. Damp your brush down, clean it down, rinse it off. Keep doing it until that soap is no longer the <laughs> color of your foundation. So I shall go back and finish that afterwards. It's just an easy tip to use a clear white bar of soap because you can see the foundation come off onto it you see there you go that's it beginning to drip off onto a microfiber cloth but let's try the Jamie Genevieve um, 
technique, which is basically to put a little bit of washing up liquid, doesn't matter which one, this happens to be the Sainsbury's anti-back one, into some warm water. And it makes sense this, and I do love Jamie Genevieve. I've met her a couple of times, she's just the loveliest girl. And she wears a lot of makeup. She's a brilliant makeup artist. She can apply it so well. So she knows how to clean her brushes. And the idea is that instead of just swishing them around in water, if you put it down through the sieve and into the water, the brushes basically get separated out. And you rub it back and forth over the um, sieve here. And then the brushes, the bristles, just they, they don't go through it. I, mean, I don't think my sieve is anything special. They don't go through it, but what they do is they do get separated out more. And so it does speed up the process. I was watching Callie Thorpe do this the other day and she was saying, is there something wrong with me? Why, why isn't mine working? I mean, it should work. I think the, the secret is you've just got to be patient. You've just got to be patient. So what you do is you rub your brush back and forth along the sieve. And I do think it speeds up the process. And the simple reason is, is because instead of the brush clinging together in the water, therefore you can't get the detergent up under the bristles. And obviously I would be doing this under running water. I think that's the quickest way to do it. Don't do it over a basin of still water. Um, I mean, that's considerably cleaner already. Um, but what I would do, I have to say, is probably fill a sink up with water, basin up with water, put some washing up liquid in it, and then just use the sieve and then I would probably empty it all out once I've done a single sieve with all my brushes and then do another one with it as well. Um, you know I'm gonna show you this here because I haven't actually rinsed this out. I mean that's really getting the makeup, makeup out of that. It hasn't been rinsed but I can already tell by looking at it the fact that you can now see the gradations in the, the colour of the the bristles of that brush shows you it's cleaner than it was. So that's another way of speeding up your routine. So grab yourself some soap, make it a plain white bar of soap so you can see the makeup coming up. Any old washing up liquid will do. That happens to be an anti-back washing up liquid. Grab yourself a sieve. It does speed the process up, it really does. And the reason I've chosen my double-ended brush to show you it is this because this is the only brush that I cannot use in my preferred way of cleaning my brushes and anti-backing my brushes, which is the Style Pro brush cleaner. And it's amazing, and if you haven't seen it before, I highly recommend you look at it. Because even if you've cleaned all your brushes out and they're quite damp, you get, what you do is you just basically lay them on a, a white cloth overnight. I mean, I'm sometimes I'm naughty, I must say, and I do put them on rads, but most makeup artists will be horrified at that if you spent an absolute fortune on your brushes. I tend to not use animal hair brushes, um, simply from a cruelty-free point of view, pretty much 99% of my brushes are um, uh, man-made fibres nowadays. So I, they're pretty tough and I'm no makeup artist. However, if you've spent hundreds of pounds on pure bristle brushes, be careful, don't put them on rads to dry out. Okay, so two at-home techniques that are really easy to use, but I'm going to introduce you to what I think are the two quickest ways to deep clean your brushes. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this across out of the way. I mean, look, can I just say, look how dirty that was. That was one brush, oh dear. Now I have done a video about this before, but I think a lot of you are relatively new and probably don't go through my archives, so you don't know about this. This was first introduced to me when it first came out by the inventor, Tom Pellero, um, who, did he win Dragon's Den in, in America? In the UK? I don't know. It's called Shark's Tank actually in America, isn't it? I think he might have won Dragon's Den in the UK. I don't watch Dragon's Den, I don't know. Anyway, and it's kind of the most genius thing I've ever seen in terms of beauty gadgets for brush cleaning. And it's really, really, really simple concept. And it works on the concept of centrifugal force. So basically it comes in three mechanical parts and a cleaner. However, it does work with soap and water. So you've got a bowl with a separate cuff in it that comes out and that's simply to prevent splashback. <laughs> um, let me just make sure I put that in there properly. There you go. There are various different size attachments and that's basically for all of the brushes and the brush handle sizes that are available. 
And then there is this really simple gadget, which is essentially a spinning device and a battery. And let me show you as a perfect case in point. Let me just, let me grab. You basically have to choose the right applicator for your brush size, so that's the right one for that. It's gotta be a pretty tight fit. It's a square hole here and a square peg. You push your brush into it and then what you do is you get the cleaner, there's a makeup brush cleaner here, which is obviously spirit based because this is going to clean and dry your brushes in minutes. You put your cleaner into the bowl, make sure everything is properly attached and you spin. And then you take it out and it's just sitting above the water there. Can you see? Turn it off. And what will come out? I have chosen a really tight fit there. There you go. What will come out is a totally clean, dry, bacteria, virus and microbe free brush. There was an independent study done that compared this to traditional brush cleaning. And I think this got rid of something like 99.999, like the typical kind of bleach advertisements of all bacteria, viruses and microbes that can live in brushes. And that is essentially dry, clean, has no fragrance at all and is ready to use straight away. Kind of clever. Now, don't worry about that. You don't have to use um, new cleaner every single time because that's a solvent in there. One bowl should be enough to clean all of your brushes. So should we carry on? It's kind of exciting, right? Brush number two is my brand new hourglass one. It shouldn't be that dirty. I haven't had it very long. <laughs> Can't believe I just said that. In. Not many, not very long. And see, basically what happens is the minute you spin the brush, all of the bristles splay out at an angle. In fact, I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to show you once it's dried off. There you go. Look. Can you see what happens? The bristles flatten out. And what that means is that one, the cleaner can get into the base of the bristles. And two, it means it can dry really quickly. There you go. Brush number two, clean. Hello, Yogi Bear. You're going to come in and see me. You're going to come in. Do you want to take part? Come on then. Let me come. Let's see if I can get Yogi to take part. No, no taking part. And now you'll see the reason why I didn't clean that with this, because you can't. The only thing that cannot work with this is double-ended brushes. Ironic that the two most common brushes I use are double-ended ones. You basically just have to be really careful about matching the right brush end to the right holder. Look, there are, they come in lots of different sizes. Um, there's even one that's absolutely huge and I've never seen a brush that large before. The only ones you have to be careful of is these ones. These lovely Real technique, super fine ended ones. They're lovely but they're harder to put in to, um, into the base. Right, there you go. This is my, this is my other most used brush. Somebody said to me, would you go through all your brushes? And actually that's a really good idea. I really need to go through my brushes. I love this brush. This is the Elizabeth Arden. I've never seen anything else like it. This is their mineral powder brush, but I use it to apply, look at that. <laughs> I use it to apply all my powders. It's a brilliant one for buffing out blusher, buffing, buffing out bronzer, but also just basically buffing away excess setting powders. It's really good. It's a great brush. Ooh. And because it's such a big head, I want to make sure it's completely and utterly in the solvent. And as I said, you know, the solvent will probably clean up to about 10 brushes at once before it needs changing. And you can buy replacement solvent. So once you've bought the kit, don't panic. That is a big brush for it to take. Don't panic. Um, you can buy more solvent. It's not that much actually. Anyway, it's a game changer, it really is. More importantly, it's fun. So you can get your children involved. 
You don't have to use the solvent, by the way. You can use a little bit of fairy liquid, washing liquid, anything, any, any of those Carex or anti back ones. You can use that um, just with water. It'll foam up slightly, obviously, as you spin the brush, but it will work just as well, I promise. There you go. One beautiful, clean anti back brush. One very dirty bowl of solvent. Now, there's also a head for all of the angle ended Real Techniques brushes and it looks like that. So it's basically um, a flexible, so it takes those diamond edges in. Um, and the important thing about that is it will take all of those Real Techniques shaped br brushes, the unusual ones at the end. This yogi keeps coming in and getting out here. There you go, let's have a look. So in the solvent, out the solvent. It's really that quick, it really is. A few seconds out, I can take it out and show you what will happen. There you go, look what happens to the bra and it's dry. It's dry and it's clean. More importantly, it's anti-backed. No smell, no scent at all. That's done one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Six brushes so far. And I'm gonna show you the other brush that I rec recommend all the time, which is the NARS smud smudge brush for my idiot-proof lining. So easy to put small brushes in, it really is. Less of a dramatic look, obviously, because it's a tiny little bristles look. But totally clean and totally dry brush. And this is the makeup brush cleaner. It's a solvent with a tiny little bit of grapeseed oil in it to soften the brushes and look after your brushes. However, it does work with something like this and water. Works just as well. Don't mix the solvent with the water, otherwise it won't work. Now, that's how you clean your brushes. That's how you make sure that they are, and by the way, always put all of your little um, containers back on here. Don't lose any of them. The only problem I've got is you do have to be careful with the tapered end Real Techniques brushes, but it works on everything. It works on Mad Maid brushes, works on animal hair brushes, it works across the whole spectrum. It also works on little mini brushes as well. Now, the other thing that you need to do is, and I can't believe anybody ever talks about this and nobody ever talks about this, is, is nobody ever talks about cleaning these. I know I do endlessly but nobody ever talks about inbuilt sponge applicators and how to clean them. And the truth of the matter is they're not really designed to be cleaned properly. Somebody the other day was saying that they could take the little sponge balls off of like the Charlotte Tilbury and the Revolution ones and wash them out and then put them back on with tweezers, which you can do, it's true. But again, I would just put them into the solvent and then I would wipe them out on a microfiber cloth. Keep dipping, keep wiping until it's clear. It doesn't actually take that long and it's well worth doing. It's well worth getting some makeup cleaner from um, a makeup store um, because look, they are supposed to be clear like that. And every so often you need to do it, especially, especially if you suffer from perioral dermatitis and you're using the same thing around here, the same applicator as around your eyes. That's how bacteria spreads via your applicator. So it doesn't take very long. The other thing you can do is get an anti-back spray. Not that you'll be able to get any of this now. Maybe you should be able to get this back online now. This is Clinicet which is um, a spray that can be sprayed directly onto skin um, pre and post treatments. So you often find it in dermatologists and facialists if they're doing extractions or they're doing milia or they're doing Botox. Anyway, it's absolutely brilliant. It's totally safe. 
totally healthy to use on the skin, but it will anti-back your brushes too. So once you've cleaned your brush, I mean, that's been cleaned in a solvent, you could have cleaned that in water and soap. You can spray as well. Leave that to dry, stick it back in. Same with this one. That's my Laura Mercier one. Thank heavens for microfiber cloths, eh? In the solvent, squeeze it out. You don't have to do it very often. I mean, if you're going through your concealer, then, you know, you might end up getting to the bottom of your concealer and never doing it. But I'm telling you, if you suffer from spots, if you suffer from perioral dermatitis, if you suddenly find your eyelids sore, red and cracking, uh, and you can't quite work out why, you haven't used anything unusual, the chances are you're using an inbuilt applicator concealer. And that the inbuilt applicator is not clean enough. There you go, look. Clean again. Spray. Back in. You see, these have preservatives in them that last a long time, but what happens is often, and the reason they have to have preservatives in them is because the doe foot is touching your skin. And so basically it can become in, um, contaminated. I won't say infected, that's the wrong word to use. So here are my tips on brush cleaning. The most basic thing to use is a solid bar of white soap, preferably unfragranced. This is, um, the L'Occitane uh, goat's milk soap, the super fatted soap, but you could use Dove, you could use Simple, any of those. Basically you rub your brushes against them while they're wet, rinse, rub, rinse, until your soap no longer looks like that. It's really easy to do and it's great for double-ended brushes. Tip number two, do try the Jamie Genevieve sieve tip. It definitely works. Immerse your sieve into warm water with some sort of anti-back. swish it around, rub it through the sieve. The bristles won't go all the way through the sieve, but they will separate enough to get the water and the detergent up into the base of the brush, which is where you need it. Because quite often you just clean the edges, you don't clean in the base of the brush, which is where the old makeup will sit. So that will speed it up. Invest in a Style Pro. It works. I've cleaned seven brushes in that now. That would at least go for another four or five brushes, I reckon. So probably, one of these would last you 15 cleans, rounds of your makeup brushes. It does work with water and soap just as well. However, the solvent obviously is antimicrobial as well. Think about getting an anti-back spray. Something like Clinicept is a perfect case in point because it will automatically make it easier for you to spray down brushes should you get a cold sore, perioral dermatitis, any outbreak of eczema or dermatitis around your eyes. I'm not saying it's always caused by brushes, but brushes can be a problem if you go around your nose and then you go straight up and around your eye, which a lot of people do with concealer. It's a totally normal thing to do. They are my top tips on deep cleaning your makeup brushes. I think we should all be doing it anyway, but particularly now when we're thinking about the transfer of microbes around our faces. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and I'll see you soon. I'll put all the details of all the products down below.